All right, so here is the image that I'm working with to actually make the screen print. And I have placed in it this color photograph as a layer. And I've transformed that a little bit to be vaguely uh, in, you know, in agreement with the perspective of the piece of paper. I, I want this to appear as a background behind the figure in that photograph. Now there's a few things I have to do before I can turn this into a grayscale. One is I have to make this, or sorry, turn this into a halftone. One is I have to make it grayscale first. Two, um, I need to think about what I'm going to do with this one over here. Um, and this is a multi-layer grayscale file. And I cannot have multiple layers in bitmap. So I'm going to have to solve this problem of achieving bitmap for just this one layer while still keeping all the other layers intact. So this demo will show you how to do that. Um, first, I'm, I'm going to just add something over here uh, very quickly. So I'm going to... Um, load a selection and because I had saved my selections so I called it one the paper and so you see it's it's the paper here but also there so having pulled up that selection I only want this one so I'm going to use the lasso tool and option click so I get that little minus sign next to that lasso and I'm going to remove this portion from the selection. So now I just have that. <clears throat> um, I want to make sure I'm on that background photo layer. And now I'm, I'm really just going to um, use the cloning stamp tool just because it's going to be fast. Um, I'm going to pop that up a bit. Uh, I just want to have some an option click right there. I just want to have a sense of photo in there that doesn't, that isn't necessarily dependent on um, any particular detail outside of it's just supposed to be photo. So, but I also don't want it to be as high contrast as this is. So, having done that, I'm going to, I'll just use the eraser tool, uh, but I'll put the flow way down and the opacity way down. So also make sure I've, I'm on maximum softness. So, so I'm just going to lighten it up because I don't want this to be, I want it to read as photo but not um, be distracting from what is the primary focal point. So that should do it. So now I can deselect that. Okay, so now I've got a layer that is adequately the photograph. <clears throat> uh, one other thing I have to do is I need to delete the photograph from where the figure has stepped out of the photograph. Um, so the easy way to do that, well, again, because I saved the selection, now I can pull it back up. Now the selection is inside that part, so Having pulled it up, I'm going to select inverse. Now it's the, the selection outside that, and I can just delete. So it's going to meet that, and it also so it crops it, crops the photograph to that portion. Um, now the only part that's missing on this are the flaps. So uh, because the, if this is if I'm depicting a photograph hanging on the wall and then these are flaps of the photograph hanging down, then the flap is showing the backside of the photographic paper. So I'm going to deselect that. I'm going to zoom in. Um, on this photo layer, I'm going to put it at really low opacity so that I can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to go in with the eraser tool. Now I need it to be 
100% flow and 100% uh, opacity. I also need it to be maximum hardness. So um, and I'm just going to manually go in. You see I'm on the correct layer, so I'm on the photographic layer. And again, if my if I if I'm not perfect, that's not the point of an image like this. Um, it just needs to get conveyed adequately. If I'm a little tiny bit off, no worries. But I am vaguely trying to delete it to the middle of that line art. Okay, and now I've got a similar one here. Got to lower my brush size a little bit. Okay, that's looking good. Um, you know, actually, it occurs to me that um, maybe even the contrast here shouldn't be as strong as it is. It should be stronger than what we see here, but n not quite so much. So I'm actually going to, I'm going to do a tiny bit of work with the eraser. Or maybe, you know, you know maybe instead I'll actually do it with, with uh, dodging the dodge tool so um, let's do the shadows of the dodge tool and put the exposure to about 19 percent but let's um, make the brush yeah super soft and I'm gonna make this really big oh I see it's already there we go so I want it big but not quite that big Okay, so we're going to lighten this up a little bit. Yeah, that's, that's looking good. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So now, now this layer is ready to be turned into um, a halftone. Um, there's a few things I have to do first. One, I'm going to switch this image mode to grayscale. And it's going to ask me, do I want to merge? And I know I don't. I need to preserve all these layers. So I'm going to not merge and discard hidden layers. Um, cancel. I don't want to discard hidden layers. So I want to keep those, even though they're kind of just distracting. The background, I could, let's keep that too. Um, image mode grayscale. So don't flatten. Discard color information, yes. So I've still got all my layers, uh, but now I'm in grayscale mode. So the gray, the photograph has gone to grayscale. But I still can't go into bitmap and preserve my layers. Bitmap is a file format that requires you to have only one layer. And so I can't take this whole thing into bitmap and still have my layers. So what I'm going to do is with this layer active, I'm going to select all by command A, or come up here and select, and there it turns with the shortcut, Command A. So it's got the entire image. And I'm going to copy Command C. 
and I'm going to go to a new file. So file new. It's going to the default size of the file should be equal to what I just copied. So I'm just going to say create. There it is. And I go command. I go edit paste. Command V for paste. And the size is fine. It's just totally right at the edge, right? So it's that it's okay to do it that way. So now I'm in an image mode that is grayscale because that's what I copied. But now I can go into bitmap because it's a separate file. So I can hit bitmap. I can say yes, flatten layers. I want to go in at 600 ppi. I want to choose halftone. And I'm going to try to maximize the detail. So I'm going 35 lines per inch. I want the default to feel normal. So I'm going to go to 45 degrees on the angle. And then I want this to just be ellipse because I'm trying to maximize detail. And boom, there is my halftone. Um, the dot seems fairly large, but remember this is a very small image, so you're actually like that's a more like maybe even that. Now eh, about that is actual size. So now um, I can hit. Uh, why don't I just? Yeah, I'll just command uh, A for select all. For select all, and then command C for copy. And now I will go back to this. I can actually turn that off, go to a new layer, and go paste, Command V. Now it came in way too big. Um, you might wonder why. The reason why is because I went in with 600 PPI as bitmap. So let's undo that and let's go back to this. So before, let's deselect. So I, I added the halftone, but we are still in image mode bitmap. Now from bitmap, I can go back to grayscale. So let's hit grayscale and size ratio, just say OK. But, and now we're in grayscale, but now we can go back, the size is the same, and we just hit 150. Now we can go Command A for select all, Command C for copy, come back to this image, paste, and it's too small. And that's just some of the weirdness that happens. Now I can transform it so I can. Um, here, I tend to use just the um, the free transform tool for this, which is just Command T, um, and that allows me to just scale it up. Now I need this to agree perfectly in size, right? So let's. Uh, lower the opacity of this so that I can see what I'm doing and and it's kind of hard to tell but it looks to me like it's pretty close. I can use the arrow keys to kind of move it over a little bit if I need to. Not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, good. Now, so the sizing is about right. So now I double click on that and that applies the free transform. 
I need to bring the opacity back up. And I have this problem of the white space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the magic wand tool to select just the white. Tolerance is pretty low. It's at 6. Um, I'm not going to, I'm going to uncheck contiguous. So it's going to give me even the white dots inside there. I'm just going to click on the white. And that should have created a selection of all white. And you can see that there are actually some gray pixels in there. And that kind of thing happens as I go from bitmap to grayscale. So it gets a little deceptive. And also because I changed the size a little bit. In this case, that's, okay, that's all right. It would have been better if I didn't have to change the scale. Or maybe I should have taken the larger one and shrunk it down rather than used a smaller one and, and increase the size. So I probably should have taken that 600 ppi one and shrunk it down a little bit. And that would have given me slightly crisper dots. As it is, um, I will accept that but I'm actually going to add to my selection. So I'm going to click Shift. So you see that plus sign that appears because I'm holding down the Shift key. And I'm going to click on some of these lightest grays, like that one right there. So it's going to add those. So I'm going to, so now the lightest grays are in included in the selection, and it's only some of the darker grays that are not. I could even say, well, let's go even a little bit more. Let's lower the tolerance to three, and let's try to include even this light gray. So I'm, now I've restricted it even more. What does it look like if I add that one and even that one? So restricts it even more. That's looking not too bad. So why don't we choose that? Now, the reason I'm doing this is that I just need to delete the white space because I, I only want the black dots. So now I just hit delete. Uh, in case I need it, we can save this selection. So we could say, we could uh, call it the halftone. Just in case I need it later, now I deselect. And I can turn, well, I've got so many things going on here um, that I should probably momentarily turn that off. And that will show me actually what it looks like. Okay. Looking pretty funky. I don't mind that. Um, all looking pretty silly. I mean, again, I'm... I'm only making film positives here, and in this case, I'm not bothering to use actual color in the digital file for each of these layers. Each of these, I'm just leaving a solid black so that uh, it'll function as a film positive. Now, having said that, <coughs> um, some of you may want to plan your image on the computer with color, and that's fine. In fact, it can have it, its, its own advantages, but that means that you're going to have to convert that color information into uh, the black later before you print the film positive. Um, you can see I'm not fitting perfectly, or maybe that's an amount of trap. Uh, for me, that's all okay. Um, I am going to have some line work around there, and so that's going to be all right. Um, so that's how I've, I'm applying that halftone to this image, to this screen print, uh, to get ready to make my film positives. Um, now I have to do a line art layer still, and then I'll be ready to print the films.